What's up guys? So, the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass is finally live and has been for about a month or so I think, and considering my last video on this subject particularly was just before the announcement of the price and Animal Crossing DLC being slapped onto it, so this week I figured that I would talk about my thoughts on the Expansion Pass as a whole and see what you, the viewer, think as well. Since most of the initial outrage has died down for the most part and I had plenty of time to gather my thoughts thoughts on this subject, especially since I was so excited for the release of the expansion pass initially, so let's dive right into it. And first off, let's talk about the membership itself. Now I'm sure you've heard plenty of people complaining about the fact that you don't get a choice whether you will get the Animal Crossing DLC or not, and honestly though I'm somewhat neutral on this entirely, I agree with most of the complaints because though I do love New Horizons, I, like many others who own the game, have not touched my island anywhere from six months to a year. And though the DLC is extremely enticing to bring me back to play it, I'm not sure that it's worth the whole $50 increase from the base membership. But that's exactly what I want to talk about. Now, out of all of the people who have several different opinions on the situation, the most unique and possibly the most informative is from the YouTuber Austin John Blaze. Now, originally I was very irritated and slightly outraged about the price point for the expansion pass, though for Paper Mario alone, I would gladly pay $50 a year, admittedly, just for me to be able to play Paper Mario again and again. But on a serious note, Austin John kind of put things into perspective for me, and now obviously this is entirely subjective and depends on whether you truly think the subscription price is worth it. But as I said, he puts things into a good perspective. He says in his video, if you own the N64 or the Wii U or even a GameCube, buying whatever games you want is probably the better option. Given even that as far as I know, all of the Nintendo Switch Online versions of these games are all emulations, but for those who don't own those specific systems, like myself, paying the extra $50 is definitely the cheaper option hands down, for just the N64 or Sega Genesis alone. And of course for the games that they offer, it is, in my opinion, more than worth the money. Especially since I don't want to play just one of these games, I literally want to play about half of the library that they are going to offer. But honestly, that isn't the case for everyone. And this is where it gets a little frustrating because sure it's worth it for me, but what is the point of also forcing us to buy the Animal Crossing DLC? Especially since I can guarantee you that plenty of more people would pay for the expansion pass if they just made another tier without it that was cheaper. And with that being said, now let's talk about the price which hands down by definition is the biggest issue that is happening with this service. Because the internet issues aside, yes I am very aware that they advertise the Animal Crossing DLC as completely free, but I also hope you're aware that there's absolutely no way they are going to slap a $25 DLC on for free without affecting the actual price of the service. I can guarantee you that just isn't a thing. And you can feel completely differently than me, but I'm gonna be honest with you, nothing will convince me otherwise. Now on the flip side, Nintendo did recently say that they will be constantly adding new updates to the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass, whether that means them drip feeding us the announced and unannounced games for both the N64 and Sega Genesis, that is yet to be seen. But circling back to what Austin John Play's video said, he has a theory that makes a ton of sense as well. And that theory is, is that there is a possible third console that will end up being added, since obviously not everyone is going to want to pay for the New Horizons DLC forever. But in a data mine of the application, there is a bunch of evidence of there possibly being a third system thrown in. And I think that either when we finally get all of the games for both the N64 and Sega Genesis, or after we've received a handful of them, they will most likely unveil that third system. Whether it's the GameCube, the Game Boy, or a completely different system, who really knows? But I think it is definitely possible that it's either that, or we just keep getting thrown more DLCs at us as an incentive. Though, an additional system system would definitely be way more cost effective in my opinion. And now obviously there is the final issue which is the internet capabilities of Nintendo Switch Online. And if you've ever played Smash or any other game online you know that NSO is plagued with connectivity issues. And honestly aside from that I don't really have much else to say that is unique besides the fact that considering that over the last two years they have had a massive influx of money. 
And in a recent announcement that they have made, Nintendo said that they will be putting a lot of that money back into the company, which hopefully means that the quality of the servers will improve eventually. Though if I were you, I wouldn't hold my breath on that. But with that being said, what do you think? What's your opinion on the price of the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pass? What do you think of these leaks that I mentioned? Do you think that we will end up getting more DLC or maybe in a new system entirely? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in the next video.